I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. I fly around the world every 90 minutes. I orbit the Earth 16 times in 24 hours. That's legit. I'm 357 feet long from end to end. And am I after the moon? I'm the second brightest object in your sky. I have two bathrooms on board, there's also one gym. I have six sleeping quarters and six spaceship docks for the win. Here's a brief history about how I came to be. Pay attention to my incredible collaborative construction story. The idea of the space station was science fiction until the 1940s. The structure might be built by many nations. In the 1950s, designs of spaceships and space stations began to develop with the beginning of the space age and it gained traction. The first rudimentary station was created in 1969 by the linking of two Russian Soyuz vehicles in line. In 1984, the U.S. President Ronald Reagan told NASA to build the ISS for many nations. Then in 1998, the construction had begun of the only international space station. That year, the first segment of the ISS launched in November 20th by the Russian proton rocket named Zarya. It's no myth. The Unity node from the U.S. launched December 4th by the Space Shuttle Endeavor set it on its course. The Endeavor met Zarya in orbit with the Unity node to make the first connection with the Russian segment, you know. In the year 2000, the first crew to man the Space Shuttle adrift was Bill Shepard, Yuri Katanko, and Sergei Krikalev. The U.S. lab module was added in 2001. Then the European and Japanese lab joined in to 2008 and we're not done. The ISS consists of 50 nations, Canada, Japan, and the Russian Federation, the United States, and the European Space Agency. They are Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, and Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden, Switzerland, and the famed United Kingdom. Maybe you will have the chance to visit me someday and be another part of the ISS and its history. I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space.
I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. GSC 03549-02811 is the star that I orbit and a long name. in the far northern sky its name is draco which is latin for dragon i imply i'm 750 light years away from your solar system that's where i'll stay i'm thought to be the darkest known exoplanet reflecting less than one percent of any life that does hit my mass and radius does indicate i'm a gas giant with a ball composition similar to jupiter your super giant i'm likely to be tidally locked to my parent star i'm extremely dark and completely bizarre my name is t-r-e-s-2-b i'm a gas giant too far away to see i'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified i'm a bit bigger than jupiter i'll describe Earth has a second moon, it's me, provisionally designated, 2016 HO3, Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. I was first spotted in April of 2016, by Pan Stars. Asteroid Survey Telescope You now see This telescope is located on Haleakala In Hawaii Which is all part of the Haleakala Observatory When I was discovered orbiting the Earth in a weird way What's the name they gave me even though it is extremely hard to say? I am very small compared to Earth's moon measuring 164 feet across. I'm tiny, it's true. I circle the Earth in a repeating corkscrew-like trajectory. Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon you see. I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye Like other asteroids do I'm a quirky satellite and this is true Because of this researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as NEO, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3, Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big, of course, now here we come. I'm Segway 2, I'm a dwarf spheroidal galaxy, situated in the constellation of Aries. 
My radius is 110.89 light years, they say. Discovered in 2009 by Sloan Digital Sky Survey. My name's Messier 32, a dwarf early type galaxy, am I? 2.65 million light years from Earth, I fly. I was discovered in the year of 1749. I am 6,500 light years across, and that's just fine. I'm small, Magellanic Cloud, or Nubicula Minor, a dwarf irregular. Galaxy, there's nothing finer. I'm near the Milky Way, but not a stone's toss. My diameter's about 7,000 light years across. I'm Triangulum, a spiral galaxy, you see. Sometimes I'm referred to as a pinwheel galaxy. I was discovered officially in 1764. I'm 50,000 light years across. This info is now yours. I'm the Whirlpool Galaxy, also called Messier 51. I'm a spiral galaxy, my arms reach out while well, I'm spun. I was first discovered in the year of 1773. 76,000 light years is the distance across me. I'm the Milky Way galaxy, a gigantic spiral disk with a bright central bulge that you can't miss. I'm 100,000 light years, your sun is AKPC from my center. On what is known as Orion's arm, it's a real bender. I'm Hope's object, a non-typical galaxy of the type known as a ring galaxy, as you can see. 121,000 light years across, bigger than the Milky Way, discovered by author Hogan, 1958. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big, of course, now here we come. I'm the Cartwheel Galaxy, a lenticular and ring galaxy, discovered by Fritz Wicke in 1941. I'm 150,000 light years across, my beauty is number one. I am M101, also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy, discovered by Pierre Michon in 1781, if you please. I'm 170,000 light years across, nearly twice the size of the Milky Way, now that's quite a toss. I'm the Andromeda Galaxy, a spiral galaxy, I say, in the nearest major galaxy to your Milky Way. My name stems from the constellation of Andromeda. I'm 220,000 light years across, I'll be seeing ya. I'm NGC 6872, also known as Condor Galaxy. I'm a large part spiral galaxy, I'm sure you'd agree. Discovered in 1835 by John Herschel, the boss. I'm very large at 700,000 light years across. I'm the giant temple galaxy, a disrupted part spiral, you see. I was discovered in the year. Of 2018. I'm 10 times the size of the Milky Way that's extremely large, my friend. I'm 1 million light years long from end to end. I'm IC 1101, a supergiant elliptical galaxy. I'm one of the largest known galaxies found in your universe. You see, discovered in the year of 1790 by John Herschel. 6 million light years across with stars, I am full. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big. Of course, now here we come. I'm a supermassive black hole found in the center of almost all massive galaxies. I'm a supermassive black hole. There are theories of how I'm formed. Come and join me and see. Core and it becomes a stellar black 
seen Believed to be found in the center of any major galaxy A black hole's a region of space where force of gravity so strong that nothing, not even light can escape You've learned this in this song How I acquired my mass is still yet to be determined And astronomers are still working on how I'm formed, that's certain Some think I'm formed from the collapse of massive clouds of gas During the early stages of formation of galaxies Start with the accretion disk orbiting around me It's superheated gas and dust swirling around the singularity The singularity is the very center of a black hole you see Made up of matter collapsed into a region of infinite density The event horizons the radius around a singularity Where energy and matter cannot escape the black hole's gravity The innermost stable orbits the last place material orbits safely Without the risk of falling past the point Spheres a location where gravity is so strong That light can travel in circles And orbiting the black hole are photons I feed on stars, dust or gas And produce jets of near light speed Blasting particles of radiation Up from my poles as you can see These are relativistic jets And my last part I'll talk about Now it's time to sing with me Do it loud without any doubt I'm a supermassive black hole Found in the center of almost all to Mars with ULA United Launch Alliance is making launches to Ray We're on a mission to Mars with ULA Bringing the Perseverance rover to Mars in 2020 Before we launch we need to plan in advance If we don't time this right we'll be launching by chance The Earth and Mars are moving on different lines So we have to wait for a window is close to earth in time when we launch we need to create the right trajectory and aim at a point in space where mars will be seven months from july you see if we launch between july 20th and august 11th it sets us forth to reach mars in seven months when it's closest to earth we're on the launch pad waiting to leave we'll take off in t-minus six five four Perseverance to Mars to propel our knowledge forth On the Atlas V rocket, let me show you my parts I have four solid rocket boosters, I'd say that's a good start My RD-180 engine has a lot of thrust And the Atlas booster on this mission is a must I have two 5M payload fairings, there's a left and a right The house is my center, which is crucial for this flight The center brings the sky crane and rover to orbit, then shoots it to Mars to discover more about its planet. Shortly after liftoff, the Atlas rocket begins to pitch for the proper flight path while minimizing the pressure on it. The SRBs are released at 1 minute 49 seconds. Once all SRBs are released, then they are done. At 4 minutes 22 seconds, propellant levels deplete, and the main shuts down this part of my mission is complete six seconds later the atlas centaur separation activates this is the time to release the booster stage 10 seconds later centaur's first engine burn begins sending the centaur into circular orbit on its ascent at 11 minutes cut off of centaur's main engine occurs the centaur will now start to coast but don't be concerned the centaur may is restarted for the second of two burns providing the thrust for Centaur to escape Earth's orbit in turn. Seven minutes later the second cutoff of the main engine happens. Centaur goes for five minutes for the spacecraft separation. At 56 minutes Centaur releases perseverance with power into hyperbolic orbit at 26,000 miles per hour. Seven months later the gravity on Mars will capture the spacecraft you see and hold on to it until the sky crane is set to release. The sky crane is used for entry, descent, and landing of the rover on Mars' surface. This job is so demanding. Their 
us seven minutes to get from Mars's atmosphere to its surface, going from 13,000 miles per hour to zero without a miss. When the spacecraft is released after entering the atmosphere, its parachute deploys to slow the sky crane that's shown here. The parachute releases and the sky crane boosters ignite. It hovers the rover above Mars's surface at the right height. The crane lowers the rover with cables above Mars's surface, then releases the rover safely on its wheels with bliss. NASA's Perseverance rover has two main objectives you see, to find signs of life and sample materials they be. This is the first part of a return mission to Earth, with ULA exploring the known universe. We're on a mission to Mars with ULA, United Launch Alliance is making launch array. We're on a mission to Mars with ULA, bringing the Perseverance rover to Mars in 2020. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler-37b Orbiting Kepler-37, that's my host star you see I was discovered in the month of February in 2013 Now let's learn more about me My discovery site is Kepler Space Observatory On the 20th in the month of February The Kepler Space Telescope did make my discovery Along with two other planets it's Kepler 37 C and D. To date, I am the smallest planet discovered around a mid sequence star outside the solar system. I am found. I have a radius slightly bigger than your moon, but I'm slightly smaller than Mercury. You've learned this in this tune. I'm classified as an exoplanet, also a sub Earth. This means that I'm substantially less massive than Venus and Earth. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. I do have a diameter of 2,400 miles. I'm likely a rocky planet with a solid surface, though. I have a surface temperature around 700 K. The K does mean Calvin in the International System of Units today. I orbit my G star, it's called Kepler 37. Here it's similar to your sun, as you can see when it did appear. I orbit my parent star at 9.3 million miles away with an orbital period every 13 days. If you're looking for me in the dark of the night sky, you can find me in the constellation Lyra. Please stop by. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b. Orbiting Kepler 37, that's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b. Orbiting Kepler 37, that's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. Or the northern lights In the night sky you can see the waves of dancing light Where are the northern lights? Where can they be seen? In the north or south magnetic poles is where you'll see their sheen The aurora borealis is caused by electrically charged particles Colliding into Earth's atmosphere from the sun with some pole What causes these colors? You can see in the sky And where are these particles coming from? When a solar wind is shot from the hot burning sun Out into space in all directions This solar wind is full of electrons and proton gas, you know But it's mostly made of electrons shot from the sun that glows When solar winds shot towards the earth These particles travel at speeds over a million miles per hour Towards Earth's atmosphere, you see They can take two to four days for these particles to reach Particles reach Earth, they're pushed to Earth's magnetic fields To the north and south poles, protecting you like a shield 
I'm an electron and I'm about to reach the Earth's North Pole Falling from high energy to normal energy I'll show When I reach this normal energy I produce a photon This is where things get interesting You'll learn in this song When a photon hits Earth's atmosphere Which is made up of air Which includes oxygen and nitrogen The gases that will flare I am oxygen when a photon collides with me I spark the color in the aurora that is seen as green My name is Nitrogen And when a photon does hit me In the Earth's atmosphere my color is blue It's what you'll see These greens and blues come in different shades you see Called the Aurora Borealis Nature's light show we be These reactions do take place 60 to 300 miles in the atmosphere A safe distance you can observe this color show very clear What other planets have an Aurora Borealis in their poles? Saturn and Jupiter have some of these strong light shows What places in the north can you see the Aurora geographically? Alaska, Canada, and Scandinavia are just three See the Aurora Borealis is cousin in Antarctica glow But it goes by the name of Aurora Australis as shown Galileo did coin the term Aurora Borealis first He coined this term in 1619 because of the color burst Next time you see the Aurora Borealis now you will know Just how this natural phenomenon produces a light show This is the Aurora Borealis or the northern lights In the night sky you can see the waves of dancing light Where are the northern lights? Where can they be seen? In the north or south magnetic poles is where you'll see their sheen On the center of your solar system I do erupt intense high energy radiation This radiation I expel is called the solar flare You'll learn about them in this song And why you should care The sun is a ball of plasma Like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field It gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots they are real this energy released is caused by magnetic knots when one of these knots breaks it releases solar flares so you are taught solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one these solar flares race through space at the speed of light creating a solar proton storm these storms are no delight when millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere these storms are called coronal mass ejections as you see right here these cmes reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour when they hit earth it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power the earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm when a cme is too big it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century so you've been warned if a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun i do say if this type of cme traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field into to a thin tail. This stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore. When it snaps, it releases explosive energy towards the earth that it stored. This creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm. Normally, no living thing on earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would affect is your electricity. Because you rely on this so much, it would disrupt human life, you see. Because earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers. This geomagnetic storm would shut down the power, humans would be overturned. If one of these storms hit the earth, electricity and internet would not work. All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks. Computers wouldn't work along with 
phones and electronic devices No refrigerators or any other household appliances Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms Their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids Until the solar storm passes Earth Preventing blackouts we forbid Humans need to prepare for these types of storms To prevent being thrown back to the Stone Age before they form A cool event humans experience From any solar storm Is the Aurora Borealis At the two poles is where they perform I'm the life-giving sun You all need me to live But I am unpredictable So solar storms I give I am the sun, the center of Your solar system I do erupt intense High energy radiation This radiation I expel Is called the solar Flare, you learn about them in this song and why you should care. My name is Four Vesta, the asteroid, one of the largest asteroids in the asteroid belt. Please enjoy. The asteroid belt is located roughly between Mars and Jupiter. I'm the second largest asteroid on the scene. I was discovered by German astronomer Hendrik Olbers, and that is for sure. In the month of March in 1807, when looking to the brightest spots into the heavens, I was named Vesta after the Roman goddess of home and heart. It was easy and flawless I was named by the famous mathematician Carl Frederick Gauss He was such a vision I am one of the largest objects you should know In the asteroid belt is where I glow The asteroid belt is located roughly between The orbits of Jupiter and Mars That's where I'm seen This is the second largest known asteroid by both mass and by volume that's knowledge to enjoy i'm the second largest two dwarf planet series the closest dwarf to the sun in your solar system see my mean diameter is 525 kilometers or 326 miles if the metric system's unfamiliar i'm the brightest asteroid that is visible from earth but not quite a dwarf i guess i need some more girth at a distance of 220 million kilometers from the planet of Earth. For what that is worth, NASA's Dawn spacecraft entered orbit around me in the year of 2011, July the 16th. Dawn stayed for a one year exploration and left my orbit when it reached its completion. On the 5th of September in 2012, I hope you come back to visit and Asteroids in the asteroid belt From biggest to smallest Their names are spelled Ceres, Vesta Paulus and Hygieia That's enough about me yeah, I guess I will see ya My name is Four Vesta The asteroid One of the largest asteroids in the asteroid belt Please enjoy The asteroid belt is located Roughly between Mars and Jupiter I'm the second largest asteroid on the scene. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. Alignments between Jupiter and Saturn are pretty rare Only occurring around once in every 20 years But this upcoming conjunction's exceptionally rare Only because of how close we planets will appear It's said the last time this occurred was in medieval times In the year of 1226 was the closest that we aligned Alignments between these two planets happens once every 20 years 
But this conjunction will be very rare because of how close we appear. We'll be aligning on the same day as the winter solstice. On December 21st, 2020, the whole world can witness this. If you live in the northern hemisphere, looking low in the southwestern sky, you can see a shining bright shortly after sunset with the naked eye. We'll appear extremely close for about a month ahead, but we won't make such a close approach again until the year 2400. Typically, Jupiter orbits the sun every 12 years. Saturn's orbit around the sun takes about 30 years. Every couple of decades, Jupiter laps Saturn in flight. Be sure to watch the sky December 21st in 2020 at night. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter. On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter. On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri. Centauri B officially Toliman I trust Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass And 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know. At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better. With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far. And from a distance we're so close we look like one star. I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star. You cannot see me with the naked I, though I'm the closest star by far I'm about 4.24 light years from the earth and I'm the closest star to the sun for what that is worth discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins I'm sure in South Africa at the Union Observatory in Johannesburg my Latin name Proxima Centauri means when this is defined the nearest star of Centaurus that's all that's assigned we're Alpha Centauri the closest star system to the solar system your earth is from alpha centauri is a triple star system we're 4.37 light years away from your sun we're alpha centauri a and alpha centauri b which forms a pair of stars called binary alpha centauri a officially rigel Centaurus. alpha centauri b officially toliman i trust Centauri C, officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. Around 28 million light years from Earth, there is a whirlpool galaxy. Its name is Messier 51. That's what I'm part of, you see. I am the first exoplanet found outside your Milky Way galaxy. Since I'm located outside of your galaxy, an exoplanet's what you'd call me. In the constellation of Canis Venatici, you'll find the Whirlpool Galaxy. 
It goes by the name of Messier 51 or call it M51, it's easy. Inside N51 is the sun like star 28 million light years from Earth. The star orbits around a neutron star or a black hole. Now let's move forth. I orbit this sun like star. I am a Saturn like planet. They had found. I am classified as an extra planet. Outside the Milky Way, I was crowned. Out of the thousands of exoplanets found inside the Milky Way galaxy, I am the first extra planet ever found. This is a big deal, you'd have to agree. Researchers use NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory to detect the dimming of X-rays from an X-ray binary. An X-ray binary is a system where a sun-like star is in orbit around a black hole or a neutron star. I do admit it's quite profound. I was discovered based on transits, but what exactly does that mean? It's what happens when a planet crosses in front of a star, blocking its light, it's how I'm seen. This neutron star or black hole is pulling in gas from my star, closely orbiting. This material pole becomes superheated, then it glows in x-rays. It's out of this world, that's a thing. I was discovered by the astronomers under Rosandi Stefano, you see. The name I was given by my founders is M51 ULS1B. Around 28 million light years from Earth, there is a whirlpool galaxy. Its name is Messier 51. That's what I'm part of, you see. I am the first exoplanet found outside your Milky Way galaxy. Since I'm located outside of your galaxy. An extra planet's what you'd call me. Let's learn about the lunar eclipse. It's when the moon darkens as it passes into the Earth's shadow. Please don't miss this. Let's learn about the lunar eclipse. The Earth passes between the moon and the sun till the Earth's shadow I kiss. On the moon, you can see me. Day or night, when you look into the sky on the Earth's natural satellite You may be asking yourself, what's a lunar eclipse? It's when the Earth passes between the moon and sun like this When the sun hits the Earth, the Earth casts a shadow upon me We'll learn about the shadows, names and the stages of the eclipse You will see the penumbras, a partially shaded outer region of the shadow cast by an opaque object like the earth not letting the light pass the umbra is the fully shaded area you see here caused by the opaque object earth not letting any light pass there there are seven stages to this event you will see caused by the penumbra and umbra you'll learn these names with me stage one is the penumbra it's when i enter the penumbra here and a partial shadow is cast on my surface over there stage two is a partial eclipse when the earth moves between the sun and the moon a bit more casting more of a shadow upon me the total eclipse is the name of stage three it's when the earth blocks the rays of the sun completely the maximum eclipse is stage four you may see me turn a reddish color this is the middle of the total eclipse to me there is no other stage five is called the total eclipse and it's when I touch the umbra internally once again Stage 6 is called the partial eclipse And it's when the moon leaves the umbra moving to the penumbra again The penumbral eclipse end is the final stage you see It's when the moon leaves the penumbra and the sun shines itself on me Let's learn about the lunar eclipse It's 
when the moon darkens as it passes into the earth shadow please don't miss this let's learn about the lunar eclipse the earth passes between the moon and the sun till the earth's shadow i kiss let's learn about the lunar eclipse it's when the moon darkens as it passes into the earth shadow please don't miss this let's learn about the lunar eclipse the earth passes between the moon and the sun till the earth's shadow There are eight planets in the solar system And we revolve around the sun Join us to learn about the different planets Now sing along and have some fun My name is Mercury I'm the second hottest planet I'm the closest one to the sun A year on my surface is 88 Smallest but lots of fun. My name is Venus, not the hottest planet, but the second planet from the sun. I'm the brightest planet in our solar system, and I'm too hot for anyone. My name is Earth, I'm the planet you live on, and the third planet from the sun. I'm the only planet. So take care of me cause we're all one There are eight planets in the solar system And we revolve around the sun Join us to learn about the different planets Now sing along and have some fun My name is Mars I am red in color And the fourth planet from the sun I have the highest mountain in our solar system, a volcano named Olympus Mons. My name is Jupiter, I am covered in clouds, and I'm the fifth planet from the sun. My giant red spot is a raging storm, as for size I'm the biggest one. My name is Saturn, I am brown in color, I'm the sixth planet sun. My outer rings are extremely thin. They're made of dust and icy chunks. There are eight planets in the solar system and we revolve around the sun. Join us to learn about the different planets. Now sing along and have some fun. My name's Uranus. I am blue seventh planet from the sun I orbit the sun once in 84 Earth years and was discovered in 1781 my name is Neptune I'm also blue in color I'm the eighth planet from the sun I'm the last gas giant in our solar system and I'm also the coldest one there are eight system and we revolve around the sun join us to learn about the different planets now sing along and have some fun here's a theory of how the earth was formed so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played Five billion years ago there was only our sun Which was a newborn star surrounded by dust was how it begun Over time this dust began to slam into one another Due to gravity pulling it in as it smashed into each other The planet that we live on was made by space dust and rocks That formed Earth over millions of years into an orb not a box They say four and a half billion years ago Earth was a fireball that's right, with surface temperatures over 2,000 degrees in Fahrenheit. At this point, there was no air, just carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor, making it hot and toxic when the Earth began. Our boiling ball of liquid rock was slammed by a young planet. This planet 
his name was Thea It was the size of Mars as you see it The blast wave from this collision sent trillions of tons of debris Which over time was pulled back in to circle the Earth by gravity This giant ring around the Earth was made of red hot dust and rock Eventually formed our moon we see today I know it's a shock Let's speed up millions of years to see how water formed About 3.9 billion years ago Earth was hit by a meteor storm Inside each meteor scientists think there were small crystals Each crystal held tiny droplets of water inside their shells Over the 20 million years that these meteors fell Pools of water started to form on the cooling crust I do tell no water on our Earth is billions of years old now you see And may have traveled millions of miles to be consumed by you and me Let's speed up hundreds of millions of years to find the Earth covered in water With tiny islands peeking out while the core remained much hotter This hot core pushes molten rock up and out the Earth's new crust When the lava cools it forms the land we know as it builds and thrusts Over time these land masses start to collide and eventually form our continents we know today do still transform Here's a theory of how the Earth was formed so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played How did Earth get its atmosphere we have today? There are three basic atmospheric hypotheses still used to this day The first atmosphere was made up of hydrogen and helium gas These molecules move so fast they escape Earth's gravity into space at last The second was made of lots of volcanoes releasing water as steam And carbon dioxide, hydrogen, sulfate, ammonia, and methane science agreed. The third and current atmosphere is made up of this. You will see plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen to you and me. All animals take in oxygen and give off CO2. Also volcanoes and burning stuff produces this like fossil fuels. We burn too many fossil fuels and have too many factory farms. All this carbon dioxide we produce is doing our earth harm. It's up to us to change the way we to make create energy if you start to make changes now our planet will change you will see please do your part to save the earth to improve your future now we're capable of change go make us all proud here's a theory of how the earth was formed so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played you're so smart and important so believe in what you can do make a change and set the stage in earth's future for you i'm the iss the international space station 1998 was the year that begun my construction and i make multiple orbits around the earth every day let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space i fly around the world every 90 minutes i orbit the earth 16 times in 24 hours that's legit i'm 357 feet long from end to end am i after the moon i'm the second brightest object in your sky i have two bathrooms on board there's also one gym i have six sleeping quarters and six spaceship docks for the win here's a brief history History about how I came to be Pay attention to my incredible collaborative construction story The idea of the space station was science fiction Until the 1940s the structure might be built by many nations In the 1950s designs of spaceships and space stations Began to develop with the beginning of the space age And it gained traction The first rudimentary station was created in 1969 by the linking of two Russian Soyuz vehicles in line. In 1984, the U.S. President Ronald Reagan told NASA to build the ISS for many nations. Then in 1998, the construction had begun of the only international space station. That year, the first segment of the ISS launched in November 20th by the Russian proton rocket named Zarya. It's no myth. The Unity node from the U.S. 
launched December 4th by the Space Shuttle Endeavor set it on its course. The Endeavor met Zarya in orbit with the Unity node to make the first connection with the Russian segment, you know. In the year 2000, the first crew to man the Space Shuttle adrift was Bill Shepard, Yuri Gatsenko, and Sergei Krikalev. The US lab module was added in 2001. Then the European and Japanese lab joined in 2008 and we're not done. The ISS consists of 50 nations, Canada, Japan, and the Russian Federation. The United States and the European Space Agency. They are Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, and Italy. The Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden, Switzerland, and the famed United Kingdom. Maybe you will have the chance to visit me someday and be another part of the ISS and its history. I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space.